All right, let's try a multiple choice question and then we will get to R squared, the coefficient of determination. So for example 15, if an observed Y value is below a line of best fit, then the residual is positive negative equal to the squared residual greater than one. All right, let's, so let's see what we can, we can do to figure this out. Now when I hear line of best fit, that means LSRL, right? Observed Y value, right? This is a data point on the scatter plot. And we talked before about residuals. A residual is always an actual Y value. Oh, that's going to run into the LSRL world word. Let me put this up here so I have a little more space. All right, so a residual is an actual, or if you want to call it observed, y value minus a predicted, again, or LSRL value. So they're telling us that the observed value is below the LSRL. So I want to give you a visual for this. All right, so I just went to Google Images and I said um, Google residual plot. All right, so this is nothing fancy. This is just off of Google Images, but I want to give you an idea here. All right, so we have our LSRL, and you can see a bunch of little data plots, excuse me, data points. I'll just highlight them here, right? Here's one data point, data point, right? Data point, data point. There's a bunch of these, okay? This one's actually down here. Okay, so let's see if we can find one that fits our setup and work with it, right? So it says an observed Y value is below the line of best fit. So why don't I just take this one right here, All right? This, this observed value is below the line of best fit. And here's our residual. It's this vertical drop from our LSRL to our observed Y value. So if I'm counting this, it's hard to read here, but this actually says the number five. And so every tick mark here is about half a unit. So let's just approximate what these two competing Y values are. So if I look here, if I draw this, it looks like this Y value is coming in right about there. So if I count, this is half, one, 1 1.52, 2.53. So it looks like this observed Y value, right? Observed Y value is about three. And then about half a unit up, if I get that predicted Y value, it's right there at about 3.5. All right, so here is our predicted Y value. All right, so I want you to think about what this residual would turn out to be. And let, let's, like I said, let's get some feelings for that. So if I was gonna do the residual here, it's the actual Y value minus the predicted Y value. So let's see what we got. Our observed Y value was three. Our predicted Y value was 3.5. That makes our residual negative 0.5, right? Because I overestimated what this value was gonna be. I thought it was gonna be 3.5 and it was really down here at three. And you can play the same thing out for all of these, right? This one, the predicted Y value is about five where the real Y value is closer to 1.5. Right? The predicted Y value up here is about six and the actual Y value is about four. So you can see in all of these cases where the LSRL, where the line is above the observed value, or we could use this phrase, the observed value is below the line of best fit, you can see that all of our residuals are going to be negative, okay? All right, so with that, let's pick up the coefficient of determination. So the coefficient of determination is r squared. And once we leave linear regression, we leave r behind. And again, most regressions out in the real world are not linear. Most things just aren't linearly related. They're a lot more convoluted than that. Um, but we always start with our uh, linear regression when you get introduced to this idea of regression in general. But like I said, we will eventually, well, we won't do it in here, but once you all major in stats, you will leave linear regression behind and then we'll start interpreting 
r squared, which is called the coefficient of determination. And so it's got similar wording to the correlation coefficient, which is just r, but, but it is different, so we want to make that, that distinction. So coefficient of determination, r squared. All right, and then let's not confuse that with correlation coefficient. And that was just r, all right? So they both have the word correlation in it, but they're, they're different. And I don't know if this helps you. I always remembered it as one of them had two words in it, one of them had three words in it, and I just remembered that the one with the three words had to have the higher power, right, or the higher exponent. That was r squared. So the one with just the two words had a power of one. If that helps you, great. If not, just write it down on your cheat sheet somewhere and make sure you know coefficient of determination is r squared, correlation coefficient is r. And this will give us our fourth statistic that we need to interpret. So at this point, we've interpreted r, the y-intercept, the slope, and now we're going to get up to r squared. So the coefficient of determination, or r squared, is the fraction of the variation, or the proportion of variation, the ratio of variation, the percentage of variation. But here we go. The fraction of variation in the y, val in the y values that can be explained by the least squares regression line of y on x. Okay. So basically, it's just the percent of the variation in the y's that we can explain away. Because variables are inherently varying. They are not constant. They are changing. And so we can explain away a percentage of y, the y variables are changing, based on the least squares regression line or based on x. So here will come our interpretation. We will say blank percent of the variation in the y variables. So blank percent of the change in the y variables can be explained away by the x variables. Okay. So in a moment I'm going to flip to my computer and I'm going to show you how to calculate this number and then we're going to flip back and we're going to interpret that number. I'll see you in a few. Hey Math 43, so let's go through how we would get our r squared, our coefficient of determination, and let's try and make some sense out of this whole variation in y can be explained by the, the x variables and see where we're going with this. So let me give you the mechanics of this first. Let's just get the number r squared, and then we'll start to talk about it a little. I'm going to reference this applet, and then I'm actually just going to show you this video from a different teacher. It's not going to be me, but he explains the applet better or just as well if not better than I could so we're just gonna watch his video all right so if I want to get this this number right here's my data what's the value of r squared like always we're gonna put our x values into L1 our y values into L2 I've already loaded those in there okay and I always think it's a good idea before I ever get going I want to look at a scatter plot so let me check my stat plot and actually if I look at it right now I can see I still have my residuals on from the last problem I did so let me go change that. Let me get out of my residual plot and go back to my scatter plot. Okay, now I'm going to hit zoom 9. And I mean, it's kind of a mess, right? I could maybe see a line that's going to go through here. So maybe it's a positive slope or a positive relationship. But, but let's start to try and piece together this, this sentence here where it says a certain percent of the variation in y can be explained by x. And so here we go. If I go back into my data, right, so a certain percentage of the variation in y, and when I say variation in y, it means that y is changing. That's what it means to vary, right? It is not constant. It changed from 8 to 6 to 9 to 9. So it's changing. L2 values are changing. And the thing is, we can explain away some of this change based on how x is changing. Because you see x is also changing, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we can explain away some of this change. Not all of it, all right? but the more we can explain, the better, because the better we can get at predicting. If I can explain why something is changing, I should be able to predict. Okay, So that's what r squared is trying to measure. And r squared, we use that number when we move beyond linear regression. So when we have quadratic, exponential, logarithmic, sinusoidal, um, cubic, all of those math functions that you may have learned at some point in your math career. And if you haven't learned them, that's fine. But I just want you to hear that we do go beyond linear regression. And most of the time we do because the world is not that linear. It's not nice. It's not concise. It's a mess. 
So we have a lot of regressions out there that are beyond linear. But we started with linear um, when, we, uh, when we started looking at regression, mainly because we didn't have this nice technology that can do quadratic, cubic, sinusoidal, logarithmic, logistic. We didn't have all of those options. And when you hear me talking about all of those options, I mean all of the options in this regression screen. We didn't have all of these not that long ago, right? Technology has really helped us out. So before we only had linear and we had to do all sorts of shenanigans to try and get things to work. I won't even go into what transformation regression is, but there's a whole, just a whole set of things we used to do. But now we have technology for them, which is great. And all of that just means that when we leave linear regression, we're gonna reference R squared. So R is solely for linear relationships. R squared is used everywhere else. All right, so with that whole spiel, let's just calculate R squared. We calculate R squared the same way we calculate R. So let's run linear regression. All right, so stat calc 8, let's go L1, comma, L2, and then I'll drop it into, let's see, it's still Friday night. I'm going to go into Y4 this time. Why not? So let's hit enter, and there I can see R squared, right, 0 0.3, right, where R was 0 0.5477. If I squared this number here, I would get to 0 0.3. Now I'm going to round here. I'm going to do 0 0.5477. Oops, this didn't quite take. But if I square that number, I get something pretty darn close to 0.3. All right, so let's go back on our calculator just a little bit and rerun linear regression. And there you go. Our R squared is 0.3. And when I flip back to my handwritten notes, I will show you how to interpret this value. But in the meantime, I want to take you to this applet. And then we're going to watch a video. Okay, so if I head to that applet, let me get my internet up, right? Oops, that's not it. Here's that applet. So you can click on that link and it'll take you to this website just as is. All right, and then what we're going to do is we're going to listen to this video on, uh, on a great explanation for it. Okay, so let's take a listen in just a moment. This applet gives you a very visual sense of what R squared is all about, so I want to go through it briefly with you. First of all, the data that you're seeing here are a variety of foot lengths and their corresponding heights of the people. And here's the scatter plot of the data. So you have foot length along this axis from small to large, and then height along the vertical axis. And if you were going to describe this data, you'd probably begin by saying that the direction is positive because the slope is up to the right. Also, it looks like it is linear because I don't see any curvature really to the data. And then also I would say it's fairly strong. In a few moments we're gonna put on the regression line and most of the data seem to lie close to that line. And then I don't see any influential points. Um, influential points are points that are far left or far, far right that might be really changing the slope of this line or controlling it. And I don't see that here. Okay, let's now move on and take a look at the height data. As you can see, there is somebody who's quite short, somebody who's quite tall, and we have a whole variety of heights in between. And if we want to get a handle on the variety of those heights, what we could do is this. We could put a movable line, is what they call it here, but we could put a horizontal line along the, the average height, and the average height here turns out to be 67.5. So you can see that we have some people who are shorter than the average height, some people who are taller than the average height. And if we want to get a handle quantifiably on that variety, we could look at the um, residuals. And you can see that some people have negative residuals, some people have positive residuals, and the variance is the square of those residuals. And we can see that by actually putting squares on each of the residuals. And if we added up the areas of all those squares, the grand total right, is down here. It's 475. 0.75 units. All right, now that's if we don't use a regression at all. We haven't talked about foot length at all. If we incorporate foot length, then we're going to end up with a regression line. And here's the regression line. And its equation is down here. You can see it has a y value of, or y intercept of 38.3 and a slope of 1.03. And if you wanted to see the residuals now, I'll put them on the screen. And you can see that these residuals now are a lot smaller than they used to be. 
And in fact, the squares of the residuals are also a lot smaller than they used to be. You can now see that the, all the areas of all those squares is only 235, whereas it was 475. So now I'm going to put both the before and after on the screen. It'll be very busy, but you can see now that you have a whole bunch of red squares, which total 235, and a whole bunch of blue squares that total 475. And if you look at that reduction, it looks like our regression line has reduced the variance by a little more than half. And that's what R squared is giving you. So I'll go to the next screen, and you can see down here that R squared is a little more than half, 50.6%. And of course, once you know R, you can then go and get um, the correlation coefficient by square rooting it, and the correlation coefficient is 0.711. So it's a fairly strong correlation, but not a perfect one, because a perfect one would be 1. And you'll often hear a regression line referred to as the least squares regression line, and that's exactly what it's doing. It's creating a slope and a y-intercept so that the sum of these red squares is as small as possible. All right, we're back. So you've seen how to do this on your calculator. Let's just run through it one more time. I will do stat calc 8, L1, L2, we'll put in Y1, hit enter, and there is my R squared value. So let's interpret what this means. We don't really have any context. They didn't tell us X was height and Y was weight. They're just giving us values, or I'm just giving you values, I should say. But R squared here is 0 0.30, right? And we know that 0 0.30 can be written as 30%. So when I want to interpret this, I would say 30% of the variation in the Y variables can be explained by the X variables. So 30% of the variation in the Y variables can be explained by the x variables. Okay, so that's your basic rundown of how to interpret R squared. And just to give you, again, slightly more context as to what that really means, if you take a look at your variables, right, X is varying and Y is varying, because these are not constant. These numbers are changing, these numbers are changing. And we're saying about 30% of the change here can be attributed to the change over here, all right? So because X is changing, we know about 30% of the change in Y. We can explain that away. And another way of thinking that about it is 70% of the change in the Y variables, we don't know where it's coming from. It's not based on anything we know from X. All right, so it's just this, extra measure of how much change can be explained, or I should say how much change in the y variables can be explained by the x variables, or sometimes we say how much change in the y variables can be explained by the least squares regression line. Okay. All right, so you saw that applet on um, how to explain a way a little bit more of our, a little bit more of a solid explanation on r squared. I want to scooch us to this last multiple choice question that we're going to try. All right, so let's see how we're doing with this. So it says the heart disease death rates per 100,000 people in the United States for certain years as reported by the National Center for Health Statistics were, and here we have a whole bunch of stuff. So it looks like slightly older data as I look at it, right? We're going from 1950 up to the year 1980. And just taking a look at it, it looks like the um, the disease, the heart rate deaths have decreased. I mean, that's good news. All right, so death rates are decreasing over time. But it says, which of the following is the correct interpretation for the coefficient of determination? So the thing I want to point out here is I hear coefficient of determination. All right, that means I want to interpret the R squared value. Right? Not the R value, but the R squared value. So if I'm asked, getting asked for an R squared value, I must have two numerical variables, which I do. Right here they are, year and death rate. All right? And this rate is certain number of people per 100,000 folks in the U.S. So it looks like for in 1950, 
For every 100,000 people there were in the U.S., about 307.6 of them died from heart disease. All right, we're in 1980. For every 100,000 people that were in the U.S., we had 202 folks dying from heart disease, which is a really significant decrease. That's, that's encouraging. I, I don't know what it was for the following decades, but that's what we had at least between 1950 and 1980. All right, we wanna get the coefficient of determination, so let, let's, let's go do that. So it's our standard thing. I'm gonna clear out my lists. All right, I'm gonna make a scatter plot, and then I'm gonna find my, my linear regression model. So let me clear these out, put some data in my list. So we got 1950. Ooh, they're a little sneaky in here. You see 1975 doesn't quite fit that pattern and then we go to 1980. So be careful when you're entering your data. All right, and I have the same number of X values as Y values, that's great. Um, let me go into my Y equals. I didn't clear it out from the last example. Let's see what my stat plot is. I do have the scatter plot L1 against L2, so let me see what I think. Uh, that looks pretty strong and linear. I might have a typo here. I feel like that went down too far, right, to go from 307 to 286. Let me look at my data. I don't, oh, maybe I don't have a typo, right? 307. Oh, I do. Here it is. Do you see it's 3076? I forgot to put the decimal point in there. So just take note before I hit enter, right? I knew something was up because this was 3076. That is really, really large, and I, it just didn't look like the right kind of graph. So I'm gonna change this to 307.6, and now I'm gonna hit zoom nine again. That's looking more like a, a linear relationship, the one that I was expecting. So I can see I've got a linear relationship. I don't need to find the LSRL because ultimately this is a multiple choice question, and it's, it's just asking me for R squared. So let's go find R squared. We'll do stat calc eight, L1, L2, and Y1. And I'm looking at my R squared, there it is. I see 96.28, or let's say 0.9628. All right, so in this case, I can see that R squared is 0 0.9628. And why did I go four decimals? Only because I was looking at the answers ahead of time, and I saw that they were using four decimals. All right, so this is basically saying 96.28 percent. All right, so let, let's see what we can start to piece together. We're going to be able to rule out a good chunk of these. All right, let me get this a little bit more evened out. There we go. So let's see what we got here. The heart disease rate per 100,000 people has been dropping by an average of 3.627 per year. All right, so that's asking about the slope. And if I look at the slope, that, that is correct. I mean, that was what the heart rate was dropping by. That's true according to this data, but that's not the interpretation for the coefficient of determination. So I just wanna put a little note here. This is true, true sentence, but not an answer to our question. This is a slope interpretation. I'll just put it here, a slope. All right, so that's not our answer, but again, I just wanna say it is a true sentence. All right, the baseline heart rate is 7,386.87. I think that's trying to refer to the y-intercept, but that's not a baseline heart rate. That would just be in the year zero, so a long time ago, almost 2,000 years ago. Um, 7,386 people for every 100,000 out there died from heart disease. So this isn't what we're looking for either. And again, it has nothing to do with the coefficient of determination. All right, the regression line explains 96.28% of the variation in the Ys, right, in heart disease over years. There it is. That's exactly the interpretation for R squared, right? 96.3% of the variation in our Y variables can be explained away by the regression line or can be explained away by year. 
So based on the year, we know about 96% of why this number is changing. That's a huge amount to know. All right, this one, they were trying to be sneaky. All right, they have the correct setup for the interpretation, but they're using the R value, right? And the interpretation for this is that there's a strong negative linear relationship between year and death rate for heart disease. So this one's pretty sneaky, all right? It's got the right format, wrong number, all right? This is R, not R squared. So just be careful on that one, all right? Okay, so we're gonna try uh, an FRQ on the next page. I'll catch you on the flip, bye.